Welcome to the Sales Wolves Podcast. I am Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the Sales Wolves. Sir. Ow. Ow. It just reminded me of that cookie crisp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm hungry. Um, hey, me too. It is episode seven, seven of the Sales Wolf Podcast. And uh, the reason this podcast exists is to provide appreciation yep. uh, for salespeople, appreciation and support. Uh, for salespeople and uh, to provide some training that you can get elsewhere and uh, have to give a credit card number and the yep. expiration and the three digits and yep. here you just click play and we'll give it to you for free. That's right. So And we hope it helps. Absolutely. It's so today... Um, and the way that you can show us that you appreciate it, if you do, yeah. um, is share it. Share it with your friends. Share it and uh, like it and, and uh, help us get the word out. Absolutely. So what we don't want you to do is is think, hey, I love this, I love the podcast, and, and I want to share it, and I'll share it at some point, but then you just never get around to sharing it. Uh, and that would be the title and the uh, topic of today's podcast, which is procrastination. And Because yeah, we live in a procrastination. <laughs> That's good. I just made that up. <laughs> it's on the fly. On the fly. <laughs> As you can see, there are no notes. Hey, Tyler, what happened to the notes? We, I was going to get around. He didn't get around to sticking them together. <laughs> so the interesting thing about a, a podcast topic of procrastination is you're probably expecting to hear a long list of here's how to eliminate procrastinate. Here's how to, to stop procrastinate. Here's how to get the things done when they're supposed to get done. And this is the way we want to talk about it, which is a completely different angle. Yeah, we don't. Procrastination, I, I, I want you to take it out of your vocabulary, okay? Um, to me, it's like the word try. <laughs> um, you got a pen on you? I do. We're going to do a little example here. Have we done this before? Not on the podcast. No. I don't think we, we have done it before. <laughs> no, right? Tyler's been in some trainings with me. <laughs> so, it, the word try is is probably one of the stupidest words that's ever existed in the history of language. So I want Tyler to try to pick that pin up. Try. I did. Try. No, you didn't I pick the pin hard. up. You didn't pick it up. Uh, didn't pick it up. <laughs> try. He picked it up. He didn't try to pick it up. He picked it up. See, there, in the in the immortal words of 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 Yoda, Yoda <laughs> do or do not. There is no try. You don't. There's no try. Try doesn't exist. You you do something or you fail at it. You don't do it, mm -hmm. right? And so procrastination is one of those words that I believe should be should be bundled up with try, and and burned in a socialist communist sack. Um, <laughs> you can throw in, uh, throw in <laughs> mediocre uh, and average, and you can throw in work-life balance. Work balance. Work life like balance. We were on last That's week's right. podcast. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to have a good work-life balance. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be the draft. But That's I haven't gotten around greatest. to it yet. <laughs> <laughs> that person's screwed. <laughs> just, just log off. You know, growing up, my dad, um, my dad was pretty strict growing up, but he had this way. You know how like parents, the the whole like, I'm not mad, I'm disappointed. Yeah. But I can remember one time he had he told me to, to do something, to, to clean something, and I didn't do it. And I remember he just looked at me and he was like, if you weren't going to do it, you can just tell me I'm not going to do it. But don't tell me you're going to do it and then not do it. Just tell me. Like, if you are incapable, if you can't do it, if you just don't want to do it, like, just tell me. And I'll be disappointed, but it's fine. Like, I'll get it done. But don't tell me you're going to do it and, and, and not do it. That's, 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 the, that's the problem. And I remember just being like, whoa. Oh. Gosh, like that hurt more. Than oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we're talking about procrastination not existing. I don't believe it exists because I promise um, I could go out to anybody that works with us, and I could tell them right now across the country, I could tell them that this coming Saturday night, I am going to stick a bag of three million dollars mm -hmm. in cash outside the front of this door of our office building. Mm -hmm. I'm going to drop it at 3 a.m., and whoever is there can have it. <laughs> I promise you. I'll be there. 
<laughs> Tyler's probably here anyway <laughs> at that time. Because <laughs> all, all he'll have to do is leave his office and walk out there. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but procrastination doesn't exist. And, what, and my point with that is we do what we want to do. Mm-hmm. Okay? And I know some people are going to get upset and they're going to say, no, I have, I have this problem or I have that problem and I have to do this or I, I can't control this or I can't mm-hmm. control that. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. Yeah. And uh, and procrastination needs not be the excuse anymore because it doesn't exist. And you had a, a really cool thing yeah, that we were looking I, at. I found an that, article that goes right in line with this, man. We were we were really we were chatting about it before we started the podcast. So so this article said, just for a moment, take the concept of procrastination out of your thinking and free yourself to explore what is really going on. So a couple of things here. You may be going against your natural rhythm True. of how you accomplish tasks. Which means you've got to be more self-aware so you can understand how you go about accomplishing mm-hmm. tasks, right? So you got to know how, how, how it fits you. Absolutely. Number two, the creative process and ideas sometimes require space or downtime to fully form. True. There is not enough information available to make a decision or take action. Okay. You don't believe that what you want is what you want. All of this is self-aware. Yeah. It's not buying. You don't really want to do what you think you should do. That is probably 100% (laughs) of it. It's not time yet. You don't trust yourself. That's a big one for people. The task is too overwhelming when envisioned in your mind. That is a large one for people. I see my kids go through that with some of their projects. Mm-hmm. It's the it's the breaking the thing down into bite-sized chunks. So what it is is them learning to understand how it is they tackle something. And if it's so big in their mind, a lot of times that paralysis of analysis, mm-hmm. they're looking at it and they, they can never act on it, right? And so and so it's understanding yourself and how you work. And so that's that's probably the biggest uh, that's probably the biggest uh, sales push for self awareness that I've ever seen. Yeah, and, right. And really, that last one for me, um, you've every single person has been in that situation where they're like, "I've got so much to do," and they do nothing. Right. <laughs> it's like you're crippled by it. You're like oh, I've yeah. got so much to do. And, and honestly, and I've been there. Like I, I, I'm saying this from experience. Yeah, I've sure. been in situations where like I had so much to do, it almost made it easier not to do anything. Nothing. Rather than getting a couple of things accomplished because you have that weight of like you didn't, you didn't get it all done, or like right. I've got to hurry. Like God, I got so much going on. I got to get, I got. And then when, as soon as I get done with this, I got to do that. It's almost like doing nothing made you feel more at peace than, than even doing some of it because there was just so much. Uh, and with our business, you know, we, we see this a lot and we try to teach that, you know, you've got to set a goal and whether you want to call it a resolution, whatever, but you set a goal for what you want to do in a year. How much money do you want to make in a year? And if you just look at that goal and that's all that you have is that goal. It's too big. I'm going to write 2000 life insurance policies this year. If that's all that I have in my head is that I'm going to write 2,000 life insurance policies by myself this year, then nothing's going to get done because it's a daunting task. That's right. It's too big of a uh, it's too big of a of a vision that you have to break up into bite sized chunks. Mm-hmm. So what we do is we have simple formulas that we put in place for our for our salespeople across the country. 2,000 policies is an elephant. Absolutely. You know how you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. One bite at a time. And so what we do is we break that down. So if you know that your average sale is this size, well, then this is how many sales that's going to equal to make right. this amount of money. And then when you break that in, okay, your close ratios is averaging at this. Mm-hmm. Well, that means you're going to have to see this many people. And right. you can break it down into everything. And then we break it down to by quarter, by month, and even by week, and sometimes even by day. day. Yeah. Like if I know like, hey, i got to sell this many policies a day or this many policies a week. And the nice thing about that is as you go through the weeks and through the months of the year, you can, you can look at where you're at and you can adjust accordingly. You can That's say, right. okay, I needed to do 100 policies a week. Uh, first quarter's done, I did 70 policies a week, so I've got this much of a gap. I can do one of two things. I can either step up what I need to do each week for the next few months, or I can adjust my goal. 
That's right. So you always have those options, but breaking it into those little chunks gives you the ability not to procrastinate just because of the fact that it's just this big idea that's out there. You've yep. got to put it into something that you can accomplish and, and have those small wins along the way. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and getting rid of the whole thought process of it is, yeah. you know, and, and, and a lot of people think, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a procrast, I gotta quit procrastinating. <laughs> and I, I just think, what? It's just like a nice, nice way of saying like, I gotta quit being lazy. I gotta, <laughs> I gotta, I'm super lazy. I mean, that's, that's, that's I have no ambition. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> I mean, pretty much what it is. Um, um and, and, and that, brings me to another point and that's not this podcast but people need to find out what lights their fire mm. they really do if if i could encourage everyone to really sit down and find out what in their life like really keeps them up at night gets them up in the morning mm -hmm. lights their fire when they figure that out they're 90 percent of the way there yeah when they figure that out the world doesn't need the world doesn't need you and I to have our dream jobs. It doesn't need us to go find our dream vacation. It doesn't need, it needs us to figure out what makes us come alive inside. Mm -hmm. And, and, and then it needs us to do that. Yeah. Man, the, with people that come alive, you can tell when you enter the room and you're around somebody that's alive, mm -hmm. the whole energy of the room is like, is, is crackling. Mm -hmm. You can feel the energy around them. And, and, and you would never hear those people talk about procrastination. But they don't or, know the word exists. Or exhibit any any symptoms <laughs> yeah. of, of procrastination because when you're when you're when you have that uh, what's the word? It's uh, convergence when when your passion I think that's a movie. I think that was divergence. <laughs> <laughs> but it's with your with your passions and your skills and abilities. <laughs> you're probably <right. laughs> <laughs> But when you're in that yeah. when you're in that place and you wake up every morning and you jump out of bed, then there's there it, it eliminates all possibility of of putting things off and not getting things done because you don't have time to waste. You have so much to do. Like the person I think of is Dave Walton. Like when he wakes yeah. up in the morning, like he has a purpose and he knows why he is here, what he's here to do, and how to do it. And I cannot fathom him ever being in a situation where he's like well, I'll just I'll get a couple more of them tomorrow. Yeah, because he's he knows exactly, exactly what he's going to do. So the the idea of procrastination would be an absolute joke to him. I think in the Master Key to Riches, which is a great old school book, it talks about um, your definite major purpose, your bur your I think that's what it calls it, and figuring that out. Mm -hmm. And then once you once you have that figured out, you, you don't you don't look at that and go, well, what, well, I do. You know, it just never it never happens, and and you hit the nail on the head with Dave Walton. He's fiery, isn't he? Oh, yeah. And uh, pushing seventy years old, and still still wakes up fired up about what he does because he he found what he's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. We'll have him on here too for a podcast. Oh, we'll yeah. interview him. Absolutely, he's he texts me like three or four times a day, and it's always it's, awesome stuff. It's awesome, it fires me up. Uh, <laughs> but but yeah, it's just you got to eliminate weak vocabulary from from sure. your. Uh, try from your brain yeah try work-life balance all these things that are really just excuses yep. that you're hiding behind to live a mediocre life um you know it's 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 easy to say that you procrastinated today because it's a whole lot harder to say you didn't do anything today and you were super lazy and you were worthless <laughs> <laughs> It's just a whole lot easier to say. Well, I procrastinated a little bit today. Got to yeah. put it off. I'll get and, it done tomorrow. And you'll have the you'll have those people go. Well, those, we're living the Bible Belt, so they'll <laughs> they'll be like, well, God's no respecter of persons. <laughs> hmm. And I just that makes me want to vomit. <laughs> in his time. In, in his time. <laughs> God is a respecter of principles. So. Yeah. Absolutely. And and I was teaching my son this the other night. That because somebody had said that everybody's equal, God's no respecter of persons, and I was like, son, you go over to some of your friend's house. Is their house equal to ours? <laughs> See, God does respect principle, and He respects what you do. Mm -hmm. um, and and I think there's some verse, faith without what is it? Work is dead. So I was teaching him. I said, buddy, he may every every human life is equally valuable. Mm -hmm. Every human life is equally valuable. And I said, but it is far more important what you decide and where you are in this life will be determined by those decisions. Mm -hmm. And and so that's why you look at it and, and, and just take that 
that mediocre stuff out of your life, the tryout, the procrastination, the work-life balance. So it's, re it's reaping and sowing. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's it's a new it's a new term. It's a new term. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't even figured out what it means yet. <laughs> anyway, anyway, but uh, but yeah, so that's our that's our podcast for the day. The seventh podcast. You know, seven is the number of completion. It is. But not in this world because but next week <laughs> we will have we an have eight. Got a great podcast for you. If you are enjoyed these, like we said before, uh, yeah, share it up. Sure. One of the best way to do that is to actually comment and tag someone that you think needs to hear this in the comments. That's the best way to do it. And it actually shows up some people that you're actually thinking about them, like tag someone that you haven't talked to in a while yeah. and uh, just to connect them with it and it'll connect you too. And, uh, and that's always a good thing. So, uh, we appreciate your attention, uh, and for, for paying us any attention whatsoever. We hope that you're getting something out of it. That's yeah, the goal. I hope you get that's something out of it. it. 100%. So guys, with that, I'm Tyler Harris. Joseph Caldwell. And we are the, the sales, sales wolves. wolves. Oh!